a half doing VR first and now AR advertising. Um, the ink wasn't even dry on the press releases for AR Kit and AR Core, where people started trying to figure out how to turn augmented reality on your phone into a way to reach people with brand messages. I mean, we're talking about a platform that reaches a billion people now in terms of mobile AR handheld. And so that's what this talks about, but we're also gonna get into you know, some of the lessons we've learned in terms of how we design ad creative, what works, what doesn't, as we're starting to ramp up this cool new platform. Um, I'm gonna start with a premise, which I don't think is gonna be uh, too radical to folks in the room here, and that is that um, virtual and augmented reality represent the best storytelling medium we've ever had, ever. The ability to bring people into a virtual world, a C completely CG world like Rainbow Crow from Baobao, this is made with the Unity piece that's won Emmys now. Uh, the ability to bring people into a world like that um, and in properly crafted way can make you forget there's a real world outside you, right? And that's what immersion's all about, whether it's CG like this or captured uh, 360 or volumetric stuff. Augmented reality brings digital magic into the world around you, and we're seeing more and more, we see some of the examples of this today, and I'm sure at the conference throughout, we're blurring the lines when it comes to reality, you know, real reality and digital reality and blending them all together. So this is just such an amazing storytelling medium. And, um, you know, why do we care about this? Well, it's because marketers tell stories all day long. They tell you about how their product's gonna make you richer, thinner, smarter, have a better life, how they have the most trusted company in the world, the best team, the best technology, how generally your world's gonna be better with their stuff. This object in the foreground, it's not a projector. What is it? Does anyone know? It's a time machine. It's also a, a carousel. It's called a carousel. It lets you travel the way a child travels, around and around, back to a time when you were loved. And who would know more about love than Don Draper? <laughs> so. With this in mind, we started experimenting with advertising and virtual reality toward the end of 2017. We worked with the Interactive Advertising Bureau, IAB, on a format called Virtual Room, a 30, 60, or 90 second, you know, a short form experience that was a full VR experience that you would enter into from something else in VR. And in case you missed it, I'm gonna show you a video of uh, what we did with a virtual room. This is with Lionsgate, and this was the first ever virtual room ad that was advertising Jigsaw, the fifth movie in the Saw franchise. Trigger, trigger alert, there's gonna be some virtual blood spatter. So if you're not too freaked out. So what we did is we took 3D content and worked with a couple of developers. This was very high touch. It wasn't delivered like through an ad platform or anything. It was Unity scene content embedded in a couple of different titles. Um, Nanite Fulcrum, the comic book uh, VR title, which you saw, that's how we entered into it here. And Samsung's internet browser, which reaches, the, you know, the, at the time in its heyday on Gear VR, reached over a million people. So we actually reached 200,000 people with this ad unit. And it was super fun, super engaging. In fact, we then did a study. We did um, a couple of different flavors of a study, including a study that put about two dozen people into gadgets. They, we measured palm sweat, EEG, uh, to get emotional response. And we got these crazy metrics compared to a baseline of watching a linear video. I mean, kind of no surprise, I would uh, hope to folks here, that something that is interactive, that's engaging, that has you fully immersed, could give you that much more of an emotional reaction. So those were great results. And again, we reached about 200,000 people with that. We did the study on a few dozen, but we also did some other uh, secondary studies that were just showing them quick videos to ask, to get emotional responses. And we found this in general, like compared to a linear trailer, even the linear trailer you saw at the end of the VR experience, because every entertainment brand always does this, they have to give you like 10 seconds of a flat screen in the VR. Uh, we found this kind of lift. So that was amazing. Then moving on from that, TiltShift, a, a creator down in LA, built this amazing virtual Lexus that we showed um, uh, last, late last year. And this was using the full Unity engine to show you a virtual car. What we're seeing here is not film. This is a video capture of real-time rendered graphics on a PC, which means you could change the colors, the paint finishes, the car interiors. I don't know if you know this, but auto manufacturers are particularly picky about how their cars look. And so we did all these fancy rendering tricks with our high definition pipeline in the Unity engine to get the gloss coat to show you the interiors of the car. And we've pushed even beyond that now with some newer technology we showed at the Game Developers Conference 
uh, where we're showing real-time RAID tracing in addition to our high-def render pipeline. So, quiz question, can anyone tell me which of those cars is real and which one is CG? Come on, shout it out, anybody. CG on the right, you are wrong. The one on the left is CG. I'll just show you a short clip while I'm talking some more about this. Yeah, so uh, we showed it at the Game Developers Conference, GDC, uh, about a month and a half ago, with a partner with NVIDIA, real-time ray tracing to get the most absolute realistic look on this, combined with high-def render pipeline tricks I was mentioning. So you get you know, very specific. We sample the paint finishes. We have special shaders that do glossy coat and all of that. And the amazing thing about that, see, you can smell the leather seats, right? The amazing thing about this, what we're seeing here is a capture from something that was running on a razor blade, like a consumer grade gaming laptop. We didn't have to attach it to a PC this big. So um, that's pretty incredible. So the things you can do with photorealism combined with interactivity now can make for amazing marketing. But of course, anybody who's working in VR knows we have an issue here, and that is the scale of VR at this point. Generously, there's you know, 20 million headsets out there. It's growing. I, I think we're all probably excited about the launch of the Oculus Quest. We think that's going to be a really big boon to the industry. But we're, you know, w when you're an advertiser, you're thinking about reaching everybody, reaching them where they are. The reality of VR, as well as head-worn AR right now, you know, Magic Leap, HoloLens, and any, any kind of thing you have on your head is they're just not in that broad distribution yet to be an effective marketing channel on their own. They can work great in pop-ups, they can work great in in-store activations. We tend to blend campaigns, and I'll, I'll talk about our advertising platform and how we sell that and all that in a bit. This stuff is amazing, but again, you, ha you have to go where the people are, and there's not enough footfalls yet into these areas, and there aren't enough into the homes. But we will get there. Meanwhile, then ARKit and ARCore were released toward the end of 2017, and that's in the wake of what we had done with our Lionsgate pilot, we decided to refocus and start thinking about how we could develop for smartphone AR. So, I mean, one of the things that's been happening here, without, you know, Unity's involved in terms of most of the things you see on the screen were created with our engine, but there's been plenty of uh, companies out there and businesses out there getting AR into the consumer consciousness, right? Everything from the social platforms to top game titles, like, you know, Jurassic World Alive and now Angry Birds AR. Um, to shopping applications from Amazon, Ikea, and the rest. So consumers are becoming really accustomed to a camera-first world. I think we're there now, and I think that's why we're also excited about smartphone AR. We don't believe that's the be-all and end-all. We know we're going to get to some head-worn and some wearables, you know, in the not-too-distant future, we hope, and hopefully back by 5G networks and all the magic will happen. But the reality is today, this is where it is. It's the phone in your pocket, and consumers are now being educated and really, you know, becoming accustomed to it which is fantastic, and it's a great vehicle for brand advertising, not just for retail utility and gaming. I don't know if you guys saw this. Everyone see this? <laughs> Amazing snap promotion. This is the Ice Dragon Viserys menacing the Flatiron District in New York. I mean, this is still mind-blowing. The, the level of quality, what Snap can do with you know, their image recognition now is amazing on their landmarkers feature. So it just keeps getting better and better. Now, the thing is, if you're not working one of those companies that has the first party app. Uh, maybe you're a game publisher using the Unity platform. Y you know, this is not a vehicle for you to advertise in or monetize, and so this is what we started thinking about. Unity exists for the sole reason of enabling our developers to succeed, right? We give them the creation tools to do that, but also the monetization tools. And so this is why we brought AR into our advertising product line, and we've been working on a series of developments, and this is now what I'm gonna share with you, is the stories around that. But just in case you didn't know it, our advertising platform is massive. It reaches over a billion people every month. Tons of gameplay happening, super engaged audience of consumers playing games, and hundreds of thousands of Unity-powered titles that show ads. Uh, in the US alone, three quarters of the world's population. I'm gonna bludgeon you with just a few statistics here. Um, yeah, take some pics, Sam, that'd be great. Oh, by the way, please live tweet. I love that one. People do that with me. So, let, let, you know, and some other things you may not know. For the first time ever, mobile minutes are surpassing TV time. It's really happening. We're doing all of this on our phone now, whether we're seeing, you know, videos, playing games, whatever we are doing. And when it comes to on your phone, most of that action is actually in-app. And that's what Unity does. We power um, advertising in-app. Now, 
I mean, it's a little deceptive because that blue pie slice includes a lot of you know, HTML5 web content. It's just built into other applications like Facebook, Twitter, whatever. But the point is, it is in apps. And that's a, so that means it makes a great endpoint for advertising. It turns out that most people, when they're playing a game, don't, they're not multitasking. So when they do see an ad, and how many people play free-to-play games here? I mean, you know this is the way mobile developers make money, right? You don't, you don't spend 99 cents or $1.99 of your title, typically. The primary way is through advertising and in-app purchase. So there you are, you're playing your free-to-play game, and then you see an ad. Odds are it's a Unity-powered ad. You're welcome. And that's the way that industry works. And consumers are quite accustomed to it. In terms of sentiment analysis, that's their preferred format. It's like, okay, yeah, I can do that, as opposed to the skippable ad stuff on the side that you see in your web pages or whatever. So it is a great platform for reaching consumers, and brands love it, and by the way, just in case you're thinking gaming means sweaty dude in his mom's basement. No, the demographic of gamers and those billions of people I'm talking about, that's everyone. The age range is as broad as you can imagine. Median household income is reasonable. These people spend. Um, and gender split is about 54, 46 female male. So a lot of things you might not expect. So this is a great uh, place for um, advertisers to want to re reach uh, consumers. So we started with a beta, which you may have seen. I've, I've shown this in public before. Uh, so this was last spring. How many folks know the cartoon DuckTales? Yeah. Right? So what would you want to do in a world of DuckTales? You'd want to jump into Scrooge McDuck's vault. And that's what we did. We created what we call a portal. It's basically a, a world you can walk into. Once you're in it, it's in a 360 world. But if you saw, the camera was on, and we walked into the world of DuckTales from our Helsinki development office where a lot of this technology was originally built. And toward the end of this clip, you'll see, you can see back out into the office. So classic sort of AR portal thing. Uh, what did we learn on this? Well, this was the first ever ad unit we made for our AR plat ad platform. So A, we learned it actually worked. We could deliver dynamic, interactive 3D content into any Unity ads-powered title. Um, we figured out how to get the creator for this in under five meg, about three and a half meg maybe. Now, we were fortunate in the sense that this is a cartoon. We didn't need to try and make this look like that Lexus or that BMW I just showed you. It's not supposed to be photorealistic, right? It's, it's actually cartoony, and it's meant to be. So the, the, um, the folks at Disney were very happy with the creative. It was true to the brand, so that was pretty great. So that was a nice first lesson learned. Now, ad advertising in AR, it sounds like it's a lot about fun. I mean, we love the uniqueness and fun of a platform like this, right? It's like people love the novelty of it. But at the end of the day, that novelty will wear out. So it's important to combine fun and utility. And our, our next foray into that was to do a product advertisement with Fossil, the luxury watchmaker. They have a smartwatch. And so when you opted into this ad, again, you know, because you were playing a game, and then it was ad time, you were invited to experience this Fossil watch. You could um, basically rotate the watch in 3D, tap on the band to change styles, tap on the face to explore the features of the watch. You're getting utility right there. And then there's a shop now call to action at the end. But before that, you could also try it on. Now, the try on onto your wrist here uh, is a little bit of a head fake because that's not actually using any fancy body tracking. Our ads SDK uses whatever AR comes in the operating system, AR kit, AR core. And so those don't have body tracking and segmentation yet. And the reason we did not invest in putting that kind of technology into our ads SDK is it's this nice, light little uh, library that you can put into your Android or iOS game, or you just get for free when you hit build in the Unity engine, say I want ads, you just get it. And so that needs to stay light. So that's one of the reasons we haven't added that kind of fancy computer vision stuff into the ad platform, as opposed to, say, Facebook or Snap, who owns that whole stack, and they can just sort of jam it into the app. So that is a work in progress. We'd love to, of course, you know, have some body tracking. but. Um, anyway, so lessons learned, it was great. It was really engaging, engaging with the ad unit. People really liked it a lot. Um, and you know, one of the things we discovered is getting people to turn the camera on for this stuff or to say, yeah, I, wa I want to see this thing in AR, socializing that and getting people to accept that, even with all these waves of you know, energy that are happening to educate consumers, is still a work in progress. And so I can't really speak to the details of this yet, but we're trying to figure out how to make that smoother, that opt-in better, the conversion better because we could have done better on that, but still in all, you know, as a first product visualization unit, that was pretty fabulous. And this is a more recent campaign we did for this year's St. Patrick's Day. Um, the folks at Tilt Shift, along with uh, Trigger, we had multiple people involved in this. Uh, Spark Foundry was the agency that 
um, did this, the ad agency in New York. Um, we tend to do this by, we, we kind of have to conceive and creative direct because this stuff is so new, but we'll work closely with that ad agency and the client. And so what we're seeing here is actually we're going to see three different ad creatives. Two of them are in-app, in-Unity app ad units. The first being one of these portals, just like DuckTales, where you went into a little virtual world. The next is kind of a mini game, um, using the camera and using planar detection to drop something down somewhere and do a little dunking game with the leprechaun. And then the last one is actually not running in a, a Unity ad, it's running as Web AR. The tracking was done with eighth wall. There's, uh, if you know that technology, so it's pure JavaScript tracking. And there's image recognition from a company that I'm blanking on, and I feel bad, so I'll have to post that later. Um, and so there's actual image recognition here. And the reason we didn't do this as an ad unit, by the way, is ad units show up wherever you're playing the game. This creative was all about a scavenger hunt in pubs on St. Patrick's Day. You can't really do an ad unit per se that way. So that's a promotional bit. But you saw it basically used all the same assets. And it ran across web and in our ad tech. And, and that is key to this whole thing. Because when we were talking to these clients, they're like, how many people are you reaching with AR ads yet? We're like, well, not, not the whole billion. We're still turning this feature on in our supply of games. And not all the developers have opted in yet. So that's a little bit of you know, growth that we need to do. But if we take, you know, if we build this, we'll take the same assets, we'll run them on web, you can reach more people that way, we'll learn together, so that was pretty fabulous. Now just I'm gonna hit with a couple pieces of data. So those are all the learnings, some sort of production, what works, what doesn't, how to, you know, when, when the right time for an ad unit is ver versus an activation and a promotion. But, you know, a couple of things we did, QSR, a fast food brand um, thing, we did uh, basically, you know, sentiment surveys, brand lift surveys here. Um, they all blow the benchmarks out of the water against normal advertising, like a video ad, basically, like brand awareness, intent to go visit that fast food joint in the next week. These were great. So that's really encouraging. And again, these are all against kind of small sample groups still. Um, so we can't take the results like to the heart too much, but they're pretty encouraging. This was another one for uh, a retailer. So these are blind. We don't, we don't talk about who the client was here, just out of respect for the client. Um, but again, these numbers are really encouraging that this kind of medium is going to engage people, excite people. And again, I think if you combine it with being able to inform them and give them actionable uh, stuff to do after, like in the fossil ad, I think that's a really nice combination. So when we do these campaigns with clients and agencies, we don't just sell them AR. In fact, our platform is mostly mobile video that reaches those you know, 1.7 billion folks every month. Um, and in the US, you know, a lot. And so what we recommend is that we will reach everyone with our mobile video and we can have different kind of ad unit um, add-ons to that basically. You buy enough media with us, that's how we do it and we're selling media basically. Spend X dollars with us, we will make an AR ad creative with you or a playable, just a simple mini game that might be a 2D side scroller for your brand. We've done a couple of really great ones there. And if you want to do a big campaign with other immersive stuff in it, sure, we can do in-store activations. We can have a VR kiosk. If you want to sponsor some VR uh, creator, uh, you know, title that's already out there, we can combine all of these things. So it's, it, they tend to be 360 campaigns. It's not just one thing. And that's key right now because this platform is still evolving. It also actually makes it more economical for the advertisers because in CPM terms, if you're familiar with these terms, we charge quite a bit more for our AR than we would for a straight up video. Um, <clears throat> even though we have premium video too because of all the things I told you about our platform. So putting those together it effectively drives the CPMs down across the board because it's mostly video that folks are seeing. But the people who are working with us on this, the ad agencies and the clients that we work with, the uh, direct brand to brands, they're coming for the innovation but they're staying for the ROI and they get both this way. So you know we have to do it this way right now. At some point all ads may be AR and we're going to be in great shape then. But for now, we have to kind of do this. So I'm going to sh show you a, a couple things we have cooking. Um, this is purely a creative demo. This was not run with Rovio. They loved the creative. Um, we are not running what we call performance ads yet, which are the ones that basically get you to install someone else's game from, a, from the game you're playing. Those are great. That's how our ad platform actually earns the most money for our developers, not on the brand side. The brand is a growing part of our business. Um, and we have not launched this yet because we're still trying to figure out, is this a great way to convert new users? I mean, if you can, if you can get a new user uh, installing a game straight up really quick, the developer of the title that hosted that game is happy because they're getting their money for hosting that. The, the publisher is trying to get the users 
they get them either way. So what we want to figure out is, is, is this a better way or a different way to convert users? Is it simply just some new fun and excitement? But again, maybe we're going to be doing these kind of AR performance ads. We're not sure yet. We just love the creative, though. And, and oddly, like this is one of the best illustrations when, when folks were looking at watches and these other cool creatives. They were like, I don't quite get it. But then they saw an Angry Birds AR, right? And so again, this is not even directly promoting the game. This is simply a creative test we did you know, for Rovio and, and with Rovio. But it's, you know, they get excited and they get it. They're all of a sudden like, oh, I see that. Like, I, I, I understand what an AR ad is. So that's an interesting phenomenon too, that not everyone was quite getting the, the brand stuff when we first showed them. Of course, now folks are understanding because of all these other dynamics, snap lenses and whatnot. So this is really cool. The other thing that's going on that I'm really excited about, if you know anything about my background personally, I'm, I'm a big uh, believer in open industry standards and collaboration among companies, and there's some great stuff going on. In fact, just next week, the IAB is gonna be publishing what they call a marketing playbook, which will help educate brands about all the different uses of AR. And you've seen some snippets of what's gonna be in the playbook just by the titles I flashed up on the screen, the different game titles, the different consumer apps, the, the retail and shopping. And I'm so excited, Sam, uh, you know, on what's coming in this track today, you know, Sally talking about retail and all this stuff. And the other thing that's going on is there's a new um, exploration of how to standardize the display of 3D products, things like that Fossil Watch across the industry, um, using industry standard formats like GLTF and USDZ, if you're familiar with those, and getting, you know, retailers are coming on board, all the biggest name retailers in the world. If you go to the Kronos website, I didn't post a URL there, sorry, you'll have to look this up. The 3D Commerce Ex Exploratory Group has got some of the biggest names in the industry, both from the retail and the technology side. Um, so that is super great. And I can imagine some of these things showing up in ad units, but they're also showing up now. I don't know if you were at Google I.O. <laughs> this was awesome. Search, sneakers. I see New Balance sneakers in my search results. It's a 3D object. And then with a gesture, I can bring it into AR and see how it looks with my wardrobe. So we've, we've closed the loop. We've got discovery to engagement with the content to potentially purchase. And that is so amazing. And that's you know, what a lot of advertising is about. So these are the things on the horizon. I think I may be over time, so I, I, I'm going to stop it there. I, uh, folks back there, do we have time for Q&A? Does that have to go offline? Okay, thanks very much. I hope you have a great AWE. Thank you, Unity Marketing Track. Thanks, Sam. Have a good one.